As much as I like characters like Fulgrim, he's a Chaos Primarch, and I don't really like Chaos. Great villains in concept, but unfortunately they've been hit over the head with the author favoritism bat just a bit too often. So let's switch over to something so anathema to Chaos that the two sides oppose each other at every opportunity, no matter what. No, not the Golden Cripple. These fine specimen. Ah, the Lizardmen. Returning to Monkey is nice, but sometimes you need to go even further back. Sometimes you need to return to T-Rex. Now we're talking. A faction so awesome that when Warhammer Fantasy died, it simply said no and continued on into the Age of Sigmar. Much like one of their characters, come to think of it, but we'll get to him later. Indeed, the Lizardmen, or Seraphon as they're now known, have carried into the Age of Sigmar pretty much unchanged. It helps that their goals are very simple. See Chaos, apply Club to Face. So do you like angry Aztec lizards riding dinosaurs? Do you hate Chaos with a burning passion? Do you like having a wide variety of units that are backed up by powerful magic? Do you like angry Aztec lizards riding dinosaurs? Then step on up and take a look at the Seraphon. But before we begin, a very important word. The Seraphon, the Lizardmen. They're lizards, but they're smart lizards. They know the value of knowledge. And they have spaceships. They may be powered by magic, but even a magical spaceship still needs math. Which is why you should check out the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant, as you may be aware, is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science, all of which are things that are worth learning. But more importantly, it's fun to learn those topics. I've said it before and I'll say it again, those school classes are as boring as possible. There was one science course I took in college that I will fully admit was my daily nap time. Brilliant means Meanwhile, takes the absolutely crazy idea of not boring you to sleep with his lessons, which is crazy, I know. But they're visually informative and entertaining, which means for the first time in years, I have learned science without wanting to be doing almost anything else instead. And you can learn at whatever level you're at. I checked out Scientific Thinking 1.1 lately, because it's been about two years since I've set foot in a classroom, and I am understandably a bit rusty on the fundamentals. It started with gears, which I found interesting, because it turns out they're slightly more complicated than just being a circle-shaped metal thing that spins. And that's the beauty of Brilliant. I checked this course out because I was curious and wanted to learn. And whether it's the same for you, or you're studying for a test, or it might help you in your career, Brilliant has the lessons you need. And of course, it's entirely on your own schedule. There's no getting marked down a letter grade because you were five minutes late on submitting an assignment. No, I'm not bitter about something that happened to me in college. Why do you ask? And just to make sure you're willing to try Brilliant, I got something special for you. Using my link in the description, which is also on screen at this very moment, and will be in the pinned comment, you can get the first 30 days of Brilliant absolutely free. And if you're one of the first 200 people to use the link, you can get 20% off your annual plan just like that. Learning more is always great to keep your brain in tip-top shape, so get brilliant today and start learning now. Now it's time to talk about the angry lizards. The Seraphon, or Lizardmen as I will be referring to them as from here on out because to hell with your copyrightable names, are surely enough a collection of several different lizard folk races all dedicated to the destruction of chaos and the fulfillment of the Old One's great plan. We're going all the way back to fantasy for their origins here, since unlike almost everyone else in AOS, they directly kept things going on from fantasy into the new setting. They were once upon a time created by the Old Ones to shape the Warhammer world as they saw fit for their experiments. They would cleanse it of races deemed unworthy by the Old Ones, and overall just make things ready as the Old Ones tried to create the perfect race to counteract chaos. The Slon, Mages Bar Excellence, are the most powerful in the world at magic, short of the gods themselves. They were in charge of reshaping the very planet itself. The Saurus are the warriors, intended to wipe out those opposed to the Old Ones' plans. As you might have guessed from what I said, there used to be a lot of different races and species in the Warhammer fantasy world that we don't see in the setting. Then the Saurus had their way and there weren't any more of those races. Except for the Orcs, because they're built for fighting and winning. Anyway, Anyways, the Skinks and Croxgar are in charge of things like managerial duties and manual labor respectively, though they can certainly hold their own in a fight. All these different species of lizard worked in harmony together to fulfill the Old One's plan. Then the Old One's magic gates exploded, demons were everywhere, and the Old One's dipped out. With the help of the Elves and Grimnir, Chaos was pushed back to the poles of the world, but the Lizardmen now had no guidance, and the first and most powerful Slon were all dead. So they tried to figure out what to do for a few thousand years by reading old tablets left behind by their creators. Flash forward a few thousand thousand years to the end times, and the Slon that were left decided that shit wasn't going to plan and decided they were going to dip out too. So they popped into their magical temples, pyramid spaceships, and just floated off into space. Eventually, they were found by a really, really big dragon, who helpfully pointed them out to the realm of Azir, and now we have the current incarnations of the Lizardmen, beings of magic inherently connected to the lore of heavens who bolt down in lightning storms wherever chaos appears. Sounds a bit familiar, doesn't it? Well, actually, there's more to it than just that, but I'll save it for the pro and con sections. As for the basic backstory of the faction, that's really all you need to know. 
Lizards were made to fight demons. Those lizards, of course, don't like demons. Lizards smash demons wherever they see them. So why pick these scaly bastards? Well, this might sound strange, but if you want an army of robots in a fantasy game, then the lizardmen are kind of what you want. Each of the species is essentially a biological android, programmed to do certain things. The Saurus are the warriors, the Skinks are the traders and craftsmen, the Croxagor are dumb manual labor, and the Slon are the mages and leaders. There's a bit more to it, but that's mostly in the realm of specifics, like certain Saurus can lead armies and certain Skinks can still be priests. It's a pretty unique concept, because while on the surface they're kinda standard lizard folk from D&D or whatever, once you look underneath the hood, there's quite a bit to make them stand out. Fun fact, this also means that the men in Lizardmen is technically a lie. They've not really got a gender, since they either walk directly out of spawning pools fully Formed or are brought into being by the Slon at a moment's notice using the power of lightning, depending on the lore you're reading, of course. As of Age of Sigmar, the Lizardmen have also finally become a very proactive faction. They're still trying to enact the Great Plan to some extent, but this no longer involves sitting in a temple city for a thousand years straight while the world falls apart around them. Early on, they explicitly could see the future better than Zinch and his followers, and it's important to note that there's a Zinch demon who can perfectly see the past and future simultaneously. In fact, them wrong-footing Zinch has become sort of a trend in Age of Sigmar. There was once a cabal of wizards who were enacting a ritual over the course of 99 days, and when they finished, it was not Zinch demons who came out of the portal. What came out was a whole lot of angry Saurus ready to kick them to death. They'd foresee a chaos invasion happening, and right when they were needed, hundreds of thousands of angry lizards would beam directly on top of some wannabe chaos lord's head. Bill Core did hurt this by ruining some of the devices the Slon used to see the future, but they can still look across reality as it is in the present and plonk down lizards onto problems until they go away. Especially compared to fantasy, where they were pretty reactive and prone to doing nothing while they tried to figure out the great plan, the Lizardmen have become some of the bigger movers and shakers in the setting. If you don't like that, however, there's still room to play the old-style Lizardmen in the lore. Some of them have landed on the mortal realms directly with their massive temple ships and terraformed the surrounding landscape to look more like Lustra used to, aka Catacan but magical. They pretty much live just like the Lizardmen of old, isolationist reptiles that beat the shit out of whoever comes too close, regardless of whether you're a follower of Chaos, one of Sigmar's Stormcast Eternals, or just some really unlucky dude who got lost on a hike one day. So if that was a concern for you, worry not, Age of Sigmar hasn't ruined the Lizardmen's lore. If anything, it managed to keep it both exactly the same while giving you options if you don't want more of the same. Also unlike old fantasy, the Lizardmen aren't slowly but surely losing a war of attrition. The only way they used to be born before was the spawning pool method I mentioned earlier and they couldn't make any more of them. Every one tainted or destroyed was a permanent Lizardman loss, but the ones who exist permanently in the mortal realms can now make more of them if they're needed. Meanwhile, the Starborn are either formed from the thoughts of the Slon at a moment's notice, or beam down at the Slon's command suffused with the very essence of the magic of heavens in their veins. In AOS, the Lizardmen are here to stay and only grow in number. That war of attrition isn't one they plan to lose this time around. This is also where I'm obligated to say that Fantasy and Age of Sigmar are cooler than 40k, because 40k doesn't have the balls to have Xenos as awesome as this in it. In AOS, they also have the room for every level of subtlety or lack thereof you could want in an army. Do you want sneaky spies and assassins along with subtle and far-reaching plans? Because in the earliest ages of the mortal realms, the Slon watched the growing reality and guided it in any way they could. They taught civilizations magic and technology, and ensured magical ley lines were uncorrupted to keep the realm stable. They also disposed of certain groups that were Perhaps just a bit too chaos looking to let live. There's even some evidence that the entirety of the end times and the birth of Age of Sigmar as a setting is just another part of the Old One's great plan. Which if that's true, holy shit, to me that's awesome. Yeah, it might be seen as a bit of a cop-out, but to me it reads like the Old Ones were Joseph Joestarring their way across time and reality, which is awesome. And of course, if you don't like subtlety, behold the beauty that is an 8 foot tall Saurus riding a T-Rex. You can describe that sight as many things, but subtle is not one of them. Relatedly, this means that you can fluff your Lizardman forces fighting in anything from the largest of realm-shaking battles to the smallest of skirmishes. The Great Plan accounts for all, and so the Lizardman must be capable of any and all fields of warfare. Whether that means sending out strike teams of skink assassins or wandering directly into chaos-corrupted regions to beat everything in them to death, the Lizardman will see it done. They're also a good guy faction, albeit in a very Warhammer way where good is relative. The Lizardmen oppose chaos in all ways, and especially after the destruction of the Old World, they become more willing to work with those in the Grand Alliance of Order. Lord Croak even worked alongside Marathi to seal a god of destruction once, and if they're willing to work with Marathi of all people, they must have mellowed out pretty severely. Now granted, I would give up most of my remaining lifespan to work with Marathi, but the Lizardmen are physically incapable of being as down bad as I am, so something else must be at work here, clearly. But all that being said, they still eliminate cultures they deem unworthy, and the coalesced Lizardmen who live in the mortal realms directly have a nasty habit of braining anyone who wanders into their neck of the woods. 
In short, while they're definitely on the side of good, they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. Not in the sense of them committing crimes or anything like that, just in the sense that you're getting your head cut off if they think you're a problem, and whether or not you actually are a problem is irrelevant. Another positive I'm a big personal fan of is that they cause fear in the hearts of Chaos whenever they face it. Even before Age of Sigmar, fighting Chaos was half of what they were designed for. The other half was disposing of races the old ones didn't like, but we, we can just ignore that for now. Nowadays, they're even better at it. It's to the point that the Starborn Lizardmen can purify Chaos with their blood, which is also yet another case of fantasy characters doing things better than Big E ever could. And regardless of whether they're coalesced or Starborn, all of the Lizardmen cause the Skaven to experience flashbacks to Lustria from old fantasy, inflicting their minds with images of sacrificial altars and Skaven blood running down pyramids the size of skyscrapers. Now, as a certified Skaven supremacist, I'm not a big fan of that last bit, but I do appreciate the Lizardmen being hard-coded to counter chaos almost as hard as the Lumineth are. And it's hardly fair to say being lesser than the Lumineth is a fault of their own making. That's just standard in the Age of Sigmar. You can't blame anyone for not living up to the colossal standard of the Lumineth Realm Lords. To get back to the Lizardmen in the Lizardmen video, though, they're all terrifying in general, for that matter. Yeah, their specialty is fighting chaos, but anything they fight is gonna wish they weren't fighting them. Don't lie to yourself. If you saw one of these monsters come around the corner with intentions to kill you, you'd piss yourself and run too. There's also a lore blurb in AOS where a bunch of Lizardmen pop out of a pool of water an inch thick via magic. While they were beating the shit out of the Chaos host they were attacking, the last thing the Chaos Lord in charge saw was the stars themselves realigning into the shape of a grinning frog. I didn't really know where to put that in as a lore positive, but I couldn't not mention something like that. If anything, you can take it as a sign that as personalityless as most of them are, at least some of the Slan have a sense of humor. There's actually a scenario in an AOS RPG where the Lizardmen threatened to siege the city of Anvilgard until they returned some plaques. The plaques weren't actually anything relating to the Great Plan. The skink assistants to the local Slan carved them out so we could remember his favorite pet back to life. So that's what you should take this section as. The Lizardmen have managed to gain a personality in Age of Sigmar. Some of them, anyways. And last lore positive, Aztec lizards riding dinosaurs. If that isn't top 5 of the coolest things you've ever heard of, then turn off the video and don't come back until you've had a good, long, hard think about where you went wrong in your life. Now for tabletop positives. First off, the Lizardmen are surprisingly versatile. A big, ugly dino blob isn't the only option available to you by any means. Skinks are solid skirmishing units that can choose between an 8-inch range with Rend or a 16-inch range, and while their save is quite dog shit at a 6+, they're your best bet for a cheap screening unit. Saurus, meanwhile, have a 4-up save, always have Rend, and have 2 wounds a pop. Only Rend minus 1, but that's more Rend than no Rend. They can also bite people for extra mortal wounds once the fighting is over, and get a plus 1 to their save when they're contesting an objective or in their territory, which means they're not going anywhere anytime fast if positioned well. Of course, Big Dino Blob is also an option, and it's quite the option at that. Take 8 Stegodons, why not? It's funny, and I doubt anyone's gonna complain in a friendly match just for the sheer spectacle of it. As for how effective they are, I can't say how viable an alt dino army would be from a competitive standpoint. That being said, they're goddamn dinosaurs. They're pretty slow, they have a ton of wounds, and the T-Rex has another smaller but still angry lizard on top of it that has a laser hand. It used to be a character named Krokgar, by the way, but unfortunately now it's just a generic leader model. But I prefer to think of it as meaning there are now thousands of Krokgars running around the mortal realms pushing people's shit in. Even their mini-dinosaurs, the Agrodon Lancers, can cause some real pain as their rage modifier goes higher and higher and they get more and more attacks. Their versatility doesn't just end in army composition either, because the Starborn and Coalesced have mechanical differences as well. The Coalesced, as a rule of thumb, are generally better in direct combat. They're the true Lizard Brain subfaction, with things like certain units having a built-in damage reduction or getting some extra damage on a bite attack. The Starborn, meanwhile, are for those who want to be a bit more cunning with their plans. They have cosmic power points that they gain for each spellcaster on the field at the start of the hero phase, as well as whenever they cast a spell, dispel one, or dispel an endless spell. You can use them to do things like resurrecting slain models, buffing units, or the best option, summoning extra units. So while the Coalesced are stronger pound for pound, there's nothing funnier than enacting surprise Jurassic Park on your enemy's back line. You can summon a Dreadsaurian if you manage to rock up 50 power points. It's physically impossible in smaller games, but if you're playing a mega game and manage to pull it off, you're at the very least gonna laugh. Their magical game is also pretty damn good. The Slan are of course the magical powerhouses, but Skink Wizard units are roughly half the cost of the Slan, and for that price, they're decent enough for what you're getting. They've spells to protect units, spells to debuff enemy units, and a pretty decent array of high damage spells. And that's not even including the glory that is Lord Croak. 
Lord Croak may get his own video in the future, so I'll keep it brief, but in short, his job is to make every other wizard in the game feel inadequate. Potentially even Teclas, who is a god of magic nowadays in the setting. He can get command points like it's Halloween and he brought the extra big candy bag, he's got a 2 plus to casting and unbinding rolls, and can unbind spells cast anywhere on the map. It might not be the most optimal way to use him with how expensive he is, but you could put him at the very corner of the map the entire game and just use him to cock block any enemy spellcasters if you want. Even if you lose, you can piss the other guy off pretty badly with that. He can put the hurt on enemies with debuffs or just straight up hurting, and overall he is what you want to pick whenever you're facing an enemy who thinks the Lizardman only knew how to do Dino Brain hit stuff. As a matter of fact, Lizardman heroes are all pretty solid additions to their army, buffing them and giving them some pretty high levels of synergy. Lord Crow, to continue his trend of being an absolute monster, is either killed outright or just doesn't take any damage. If he takes 18 wounds or more at once, he just dies automatically, but otherwise he just rolls some dice and adds the wounds he's taken, and if the total is less than 20, he just goes on as normal. Combine that with his 4-up save and the inability to change that save, and he's surprisingly tanky for a wizard. Saurus Old Bloods makes Saurus units hit better, Slon can make units fly and get a buff to saving against ranged attacks, Old Bloods and Carnosaurs can issue commands without spending any command points. Between abilities like that and the relics you can equip them with, they can seriously buff a Lizardman army, to say nothing of the fact they're all pretty good themselves. And of course, there's models like the Engine of the Gods, which has its own special way of assisting nearby units and harming the enemy. It can also summon Saurus or Skinks to the battlefield if it rolls well on its power generation table, which is yet another way to prank your enemies with surprise lizards they weren't expecting. It can be used with the Coalesce too, meaning you have, once again, another way to wrongfoot enemies expecting you to go full Unga Bunga, even with the subset of Lizardmen who specialize in full Unga Bunga. As for the models themselves, they're all pretty damn great now. They were getting up there in the years, but with the refresh they finally got, they're beautiful. Saurus look like the fearsome warriors they should, Croxagore all look like Killer Croc has been taking racehorse roids for breakfast, and the Slon all look like the ancient magic frogs they are. Additionally, they're not only easy to paint, but pretty much a blank canvas to go wild with. All the colors of the rainbow will work with them, they're a bunch of scaly wizards, they can come in whatever color you want them to. Sure, something like the Aquasaurus is the classic, but you don't gotta limit yourself to that by any means. Lastly, the Lizardmen can be a pretty cheap army to collect, relatively speaking for GW standards of course. The high point cost of their models means that you can fill out an army composition pretty quickly with them. If you're really only interested in lower point games, the Vanguard box and maybe a Skink Wizard is all you're really going to need. Sure, if you make an army entirely out of Skinks, you're going to be spending a lot on them, but why would you want an all Skink army? That's a bit goofy of you, if I say so myself. They're also more or less unchanged from fantasy army-wise, which means you've got a vintage army that's also still getting updates. Nice. The Saurus Eternity Warden model doesn't have rules, unfortunately, but hey, you can still get them, which I'm more than fine with. Being able to collect old models but not play them at least has value to people who like collecting Warhammer, and I wish more minis were available like that. Yet even they are not without weakness. As you might have guessed from earlier, the Lizardmen do not make the best of neighbors. The Starborn are mystical and rather mysterious. In their lore, the first time they fought alongside Order was when they lightning their way down onto a battlefield the Stormcast were already fighting on, and then they just kind of dipped out the moment the fighting was over. Which isn't evil or anything, but it's not the kind of ally you're going to be making small talk or any actual plans with. As for the Coalesce, they're like the old Lizardmen from Fantasy. If you go into their jungle, it doesn't matter who you are, you're going to die a messy death. Even in the Age of Sigma role-playing game, Seraphon can't become soulbound like most other races, and I believe it's actually advised for them to solely be NPCs who join for a single adventure and then leave. They're on order because they build up civilization and oppose chaos, but they're at best not going to be making small talk with anyone, and at worst just as much a threat as chaos, destruction, or death to the average citizen of the mortal realms. Lord Croak did work with Marathi of all people, like I said before, but that was a pretty exceptional situation, not the norm. You may have allies with your Lizardman army, but you're not going to have any friends. And although the Seraphon have more characterization to them than they did as the Lizardmen, that's still not saying much. They're still following the ever-unexplained great plan, they're still biological androids who on an individual basis don't have any plans in my life beyond fight chaos. There's Lord Croak who's willing to work with others and sacrifice himself as need be, as shown from the end times, there's that one slon and skink who liked the pet dinosaur, and that's more or less your lot for characterization. Your average lizardman isn't going home to a lizard woman and lizard child after the fighting is over. This is what they exist for. Consequently, this means lizardman stories are going to be in short supply, and the major narrative events potentially won't focus on them as often as other factions. Of course, as I've said for other factions like this, this makes them perfect for a homebrew situation, or if you're into Warhammer as a sandbox war game rather than something driven by characters. But if you are driven by characters and the faction having a very relatable human feel to them, it's not the best one in the world for you to pick. Another lore-based con for them is that they, like many of the Order Faction in AOS, failed. But they failed in a way beyond all the other ones did. 
They failed the old ones the first time around, declaring the Great Plan to be a bust during the end times. And then when the Age of Chaos rolled around, they failed to prevent Chaos from overtaking most of the mortal realms. Now, especially for that last one, you might say that you can place the blame for that in almost all the Order factions, and fair's fair, you can. But the Lizardmen, unlike the other factions, were specifically created to fight Chaos from their very inception in an entirely different game. Their whole purpose was to prepare the world alongside the old ones to prevent Chaos from overrunning reality, and it did just that twice. Not a great track record. As a final lore con, the Lizardmen are still forever in the Stone Age with their tech. Now, between the Slan being able to unmake entire continents with a thought, and the fact that Saurus are eight-foot-tall geckos constructed out of brick shithouses, this isn't that much of a problem. But part of the fun of Warhammer Fantasy in AOS is that cultures in them change in advance, and the Lizardmen don't really do that. They don't necessarily need to, granted, but there's still never going to be a Lizardmen unit of musket skinks or something like that, which is a shame. As for tabletop cons, one of the biggest weaknesses is the alliances on heroes and whatnot to make the most out of your army. Slon casting spells or Sars heroes buffing your units, these are what you need to make the most out of a Lizardman army. Now, it's not as bad as the undead factions, where if your vampire general dies before the game is in its last round, you might as well just concede then and there. They can still function without their heroes. A dinosaur doesn't really need the guy in charge to tell it what to do. They just won't function at their best without that guidance. This is compounded on by the fact that the units are rather pricey for what you're getting with those points, so without those heroes buffing them, they're kind of suboptimal. Suboptimal doesn't mean bad, I want to make that clear. A Saurus is going to beat things to death no matter what. But he could be beating things to death much more effectively with a hero or general telling him how to best do it. Moving on to the big hitters, the cheapest of the dinosaurs is also 180 points minimum, with the rest being roughly 250 or more, and Lord Croak flops his meat down at 410 points. While he's an absolute monster for 410 points, that's still pretty pricey. To keep your army running at full steam, you need all your special dudes alive for long enough to buff your army through at least a couple rounds of fighting. And of course, the pricing issue I mentioned is a problem all by itself. 10 Saurus is 170 points, only 10 less than a unit of Chaos Warriors. That might not sound too bad, but the Saurus have a 4-up save and Chaos Warriors have a 3-up. The Saurus do have a slightly better bravery score than the Warriors, but at least personally, I'd take the save over the extra bravery point. This only gets worse with character and dino units added in, and while working in sync, the Lizardmen are damn scary, their expensive nature means that losses are gonna hurt. Even Skinks are 90 points for 10 minis, which due to me loving the Skaven means I consider them to be complete dog shit for that cost. I mean, come on now, 100 points gets you 20 clan rats, and the skinks have a worse save of 6 plus unless you give them the option with the star buckler shield. A 6 plus save. They might as well be politely asking the bullets coming at them to please not hurt. Sure, they have some more movement shenanigans, but the point to cost ratio is way off for me. In low point games, losing almost any unit can hurt you a lot, and even in higher games, you should still be careful with your dudes. You can still bull rush into enemy models, it's not that you'll be screwed if you do. Lord Croak brain level maneuvering is by no means required to play the Lizardmen. Just make sure your full frontal assault is in some way part of a plan, even if it's a basic one and you aren't just going full orc. Otherwise, it might just end with you losing a couple hundred points of models before the battle's even started. They're also pretty melee-centric, which means the slow speed of a good portion of the units can hurt them if you aren't able to weather a hail of ranged attacks against armies like the Karadran Overlords. I wouldn't say they're the worst in the game at range, and the wizards can mitigate it further with their spells, but you really want your dinos to be getting into bite range to be truly effective. Raising their two wound rolls and dealing with Rend are other problems they face. Now, the two wound rolls isn't too much of a problem, admittedly, because they have pretty solid stats for that one already, but their counter to an enemy with a lot of Rend is to really hope that the enemy doesn't have a lot of Rend. The Saurus 3-up situational save looks really good on paper, until an enemy unit with Rend 2 comes along, and suddenly the terrifying sapient dinosaurs more resemble the chicken than the T-Rex. To end off the tabletop cons is a variety of miscellaneous stuff not really worth their own section. A good chunk of the dinosaurs as well as the Saurus are pretty damn slow, skinks are weak as hell with piss poor leadership, stuff like that. Most of their models have a fairly obvious downside that you're going to have to find a workaround for. Not crippling exactly, but something to keep note of at all times. Also, the Ripperdactyl Riders. I do not like this unit, and I don't really know why. They're fast-flying cavalry, so they do have their uses, but maybe I don't like them because of the 5-up save on a flying unit with only 3 wounds per model. Maybe it's because they're most effective by placing frog-shaped hit markers on certain units, and that requires a decent bit of planning and positioning to make the most of. Maybe it's because I just don't like the idea of taking this unit when you can take a different kind of pterodactyl that has a ranged option instead. Or hell, maybe it's all of the above. But at this point, I'm complaining about a single model for over half a paragraph straight. 
Time to wrap up. Overall, the Seraphon are solid for a variety of lore interests, playstyles, and modeling choices. Make sure to get your warriors into melee quickly, and any cheap skirmishing units should be annoying the hell out of the enemy until you can get the Carnosaur into melee range. Those things drove dragons out of an entire continent back in Warhammer Fantasy. With them as your Age of Sigmar army, you can repeat that on any smartass who tries to tell you the T-Rex was a scavenger while a magical one is turning his wizard into a pulled pork sandwich. Thank you as always to my wonderful channel members. You were the great plan to my Seraphon Lizardman, guiding me ever forward even though I don't really know what I'm being guided towards. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe or become a member. Either way, thank you for watching and take care out there. I wish Lord Croak and the Emperor met so the Emperor could feel objectively inferior in every possible way. Living status and how well they're able to get around nowadays? Well, the Emperor is in non-stop hell and has been for 10,000 years, while Lord Croak died and just wouldn't know. They wheel him out whenever something needs to explode really badly, really quickly. Death just didn't affect him. Fighting off chaos, while true Warhammer fantasy did explode from chaos, Lord Croak held off infinite demons by himself, just like the Emperor does. Except he fixed the issue permanently and is still able to go out and do stuff. And of course, sex appeal? Need I say more on who wins that one?